There are many ways to animate a still image. I'll show you some that I'm sure you're familiar with and a few I bet you've never seen before. Stick around. Hi, I'm Charles. Welcome to Onomata Poetics. This episode is about animating abstract paintings. I'm sure you're familiar with 3D model animation and character animation and stop frame animation, but there are lots of kinds of uh, animating tricks that you can do to still images to bring them to life. The paintings that we're using as our subject matter are ones that I did quite a few years ago. In the last episode, I used some VR footage that I shot more than three years ago, and I thought I was reaching back a bit. Well, I'm reaching a little bit farther back in this case. The images that we're using are taken from slides. Slides that were taken the year that Bill Clinton was elected president. What amazed me is how well these slides scan. Using my scanner with its slide templates attached, I was able to achieve incredibly detailed and beautiful scans of these more than 30 year old photographs. Let's talk about the types of animation that we're gonna show in this video. The first and simplest is what's become known as the Ken Burns effect. Before Ken Burns videos were popular and before this effect became known as the Ken Burns effect, typically images were just shown still on the screen like this. In order to bring them to life and have us feel like we can actually go into the photograph or into the artwork, Ken Burns zoomed in and panned around detailed scans of the images. We can do the same thing here. Whether the subject matter is realistic or abstract doesn't really matter. It gives you an intimacy with the subject matter that you wouldn't otherwise have. The effect that's sometimes referred to as 2.5D, mostly used on photographs, where you separate the foreground and background, or maybe multiple layers of background, and you give a space between those and you allow the camera to move and create what's called the parallax effect where you can see the dimensions between these or the implied dimension between these layers. That's a great effect. It's a little bit more useful on realistic photographs than it is uh, in abstracts, but in any case, I'll show you how that might work in an abstract and some of the limitations of that. To illustrate this, we're going to drop this painting into Photoshop and trace some of its elements to create a displacement map. We're going to apply that map in Adobe After Effects, and you can see part of the issue. Just because you traced part of the image and moved it to another layer doesn't mean that the area below that filled in with whatever the background is composed of. So to get by some of the limitations of that effect, we can try a different path, this time using Adobe After Effects and displacement maps. We're simply going to select an image and create a new composition from it. We're going to create a new solid. We can leave the settings to default. We're going to, for now, put the image back on top. And we're going to add 
the fractal noise effect onto the solid. And we're going to change some of the settings here. I think we'll make it swirly. We're going to increase the contrast. We're going to bring down the complexity. Maybe bring down the brightness. Once we get it to somewhere we like, we're going to drop down to the effects part of this under fractal noise, under evolution. There's lots of ways to do this, but in this case, we're just going to put it in time times 20, which will make it go 20 degrees for every second. And that will add this automatic animation to it. Then the only remaining step is to go back to the painting and add the displacement map filter. And we are going to change that to use the solid layer. And we're going to change it to be luminance. And we're going to increase the displacement so you really can see it. And here's the effect. These displacement maps can look quite different and their effect can be just as different on the images that you choose. In my last episode, Equal Rectangular Immersive Video, I took 360 VR video and remapped it onto a two-dimensional gridded plane. Then I used the GoPro VR reframe plugin to adjust the way that that information is presented. In this video, we're going to do kind of the opposite. In the last video, we took information that was based on a globe and flattened it out to a grid. In this case, we're going to take two-dimensional information based on a grid and remap, remap that onto a three-dimensional globe. Here's some examples of using that effect to take 2D information and give it a 3D effect. I wanted to talk a little bit about the paintings that we're using. They're in two groups. One are watercolor paintings of various sizes. And the other are a series that I call the letterbox series, which were watercolor paintings mounted onto foam core and cut up and placed inside of these letter trays from um, the days when printing presses had individual letters that you had to combine to make the type. So those are the effects that help create the series. And here's the visualization. Hope you enjoy.
So that's the visualization. Thank you so much for watching. I had a great time making it. I hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you again real soon. Everybody stay safe.